Hello, welcome to 4-Minute Film School. My name is Valentina V, and today we are talking about dramatic or moody music video lighting setups. Let's go. I have here cinematographer Drew Kowalski with me who has worked on a ton of music videos, dozens. He's lit people like Alice in Chains, Wiz Khalifa, Big Sean. And today we're gonna to talk about how to light a dramatic music video. So Drew, what are some of the things that we should keep in mind with this particular video and the setups we're doing? Showing the space that we're in, not just doing close-ups, showing the production value of the space and lighting those spaces. The idea that your lighting should be motivated by the emotion of the song, uh, but also keeping in mind that your lighting in a music video doesn't necessarily have to be motivated by practicals or by windows or anything like that. So each light doesn't have to have a motivation, but the overall theme of it should be motivated by what the theme of the song is. Yes. In this case, each of our lighting setups is motivated by a different moody song. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. So our first setup is fairly easy. It's just along this wall and we have yeah. just one chair and our talent. It's kind of inspired by like Adele or like Christina Aguilera, like those more dramatic singer songwriter kind of music videos. I think it's really cool to have a shot that uh, number one is in profile, which yeah. you don't see a ton. A lot of music video coverage is from the front and a lot of coverage is also really tight on the face. So uh, for the lighting, which light did you set up first? Uh, so our first light was a 120D Mark II. We had that up on a combo stand, probably about 12 or 14 feet in the air. It had two layers of full CTO on it, um, and it was just kind of adding kind of a pool of light along the wall and a little bit on the floor. It's nice and warm, so it, it sort of warms up that whole wall and yeah, all the tonalities there. Exactly. So as a little bit of a contrast, mm -hmm. for her backlight, you used a cooler light. Yes. Uh, what was that? So for her back edge light, we used a 120D Mark II with a light dome II over it. And then just to make it even softer, we had a four x four uh, bleach muslin floppy and we flagged the entire thing off of the back wall. You just want to separate her a little bit on yeah. the back there. So then you added your key light, mm -hmm. and that was, first of all, a really big source, and second yeah. of all, it was a lot warmer than your backlight. How did you accomplish that? So for her key light, we used a 300D with a light dome over it, but with no diffusion on the light dome. It was just to control the light. And then we had it shooting through two layers of unbleached muslin, and the unbleached muslin uh, did two things. It, warmed the light up substantially, but it also softened the light to make it more pleasing on her face. I think it's really cool that you only really put light in the very front of her face and right behind her. So yeah. what we see on the side is, is pretty much dark. And not only does that create dimensionality mm -hmm. to her face and to her body, but it also adds to that dramatic feel. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, let's take a look at it. So the second setup is for a group performance yeah. shot. It's really meant uh, to highlight people in one space playing instruments or singing or something like that. So what are some like rules of thumb that you should have for a group performance? You know, you look at like a Killers music video, Breaking Benjamin music video, it's usually always a big, soft, sidey light. And what that does is it evenly lights all of the people in the band and you don't have to worry about the shadows hitting each other as much because the light is coming from the side. So our main giant soft source, yeah. what was that? So for our key light, we used three 300D Mark IIs and they were all going through a four x four of bleached muslin. And that, that was going through an eight by eight of magic cloth. And the three lights gave us the punch that we need to go through both of those layers of diffusion. And I also noticed that you sort of put some duvetine along the bottom yeah. of that entire source. Mm -hmm. Was that to knock off the lighting from the floor? Yeah, exactly. So we took uh, duvetine, we put it across the entire eight by eight frame on the bottom, just to make sure the light was more focused on the actors and not 
getting on the floor. So it's really important to also have a nice negative fill on yes. the other side, just because if the room is big, light is bouncing off everywhere. Exactly. You want to make sure to shape one side of everyone's face. And last but not least, you also added some practicals there on the ground. It was uh, four M9s mm -hmm. and two MXs, which are just like these tiny lights that you can place. Because they were on the bottom, they really created some nice texture on the wall. Yeah, so these lights are great because they're battery powered. You can kind of throw them anywhere and they're pretty punchy. And so we use them just to uplight the back wall behind the actors to create some dimensionality to the image and kind of separate them from the wall. Let's take a look at how this was built. Our last setup is this kind of cool stage performance setup from the back on a dolly. It's inspired by Justin Timberlake suit and tie. Really cool video. Not the yeah. angstiest, but definitely moody, definitely yeah. kind of. Uh, Stylized. Exactly. Yeah. And black and white. Now, does it matter what color temperature all the lights are? Um, in my opinion, yes. The color temperature of the lights used definitely matters because when you convert the image to black and white, whatever color temperature the lights are using R will affect the gray tonality of what those lights look like in black and white. So for the stage setup, first yeah. you focused on sort of what's in the background, what's yeah. in this giant hall, and mm -hmm. it's actually pretty challenging to light a hall like that. Yeah, it is. For the middle shaft of light or the middle textural light on the wall, we used a 1.2K HMI, and that was coming through a doorway in the back of the room, kind of coming in, and we just used the doorway to shape the light. It was super simple. Then you put a 120D2 really high up mm -hmm. uh, with barn doors yeah. for, for the back section of yeah. the hall. So that we put all the way top stick on a C-stand, aim that straight down through all the beams in the back of the room just to create some cool texture on the back. And so for the foreground wall highlights, mm -hmm. uh, you actually introduced a panel. Yeah, so for that we used an LS1, and that was also coming through a doorway. Pretty interesting that three completely different lights kind of acted all together to yeah. illuminate the background of this scene. Mm -hmm. So you took the same practicals as in the previous setup, you mm -hmm. put them on the stage, mm -hmm. you had an MW and an F7 up at the top, mm -hmm. and then an LS1C down on the ground. Yeah, so the practicals just really added, they add a lot to the scene, you know, they texturize the background, they give some shape to the stage, um, the LS1 behind him on the wall on the stage kind of separates him from that back wall, and so they do a lot of things. You can just put them on the stage and it's like, oh, they're totally meant to be there. Yeah, exactly. You totally buy them as practical lights that would be built into the stage. So in this kind of setup also, it makes sense for there to be a spotlight. And so instead of putting the light on a stand, we used a C-clamp and rigged the light to a beam. Because we're seeing the light in the shot, the beam of light is so bright that you don't really see any of the rigging hardware. And then of course, you gotta bring in some fog yeah. to texture that beam. So let's take a look at how you built this. So that was your episode on how to shoot, how to light dramatic music video setups. Drew, what are some things to keep in mind again? So some things to keep in mind with music videos is to shoot wide, show the room, show the space that you're in, add production value, don't just shoot in close up. You want your lighting to be motivated by the context of the song. Because it's a music video, your lighting doesn't necessarily have to be motivated by practicals. That brings me to our comment question this week, which is what is a shot in a music video that you particularly like? that is dramatic. We want to know. Leave your answer in the comments below and the best answer is going to win an SKB case similar to our SKB kit just yeah. without any of the lights inside. If you like the show as always please subscribe. If you're not subscribed yet hit that like button, that thumb, turn on notifications and if you want to follow either of us or if you have questions about anything we've said go ahead and just hit us up on our social media. All the links will be down below. Till next time. Bye.